incredible in a lot of ways. I mean, it's not really incredible when you just think about it. And what I'm saying is just this. Look at all the people. Look at all the people in a community that doesn't have just everything or tons and tons and tons of people. But you're here, and I hope you know that I'm here. You know, you're here because of your love and your appreciation and your respect. And I hope you know that with parents who grew up, one on that side of the mountain and one up that hollow, that I owe my life to this community and this area. Now, but truly, for what Denny, for what so many have done, so many, and there's no point in me going through and talking about and trying to name everybody. But at the end of the day, it's as simple as mud. We owe everything we have, every single bit of our fiber, we owe everything we have to the people that have given us everything, all of our veterans, all of our active military, all those that have given the ultimate sacrifice, every single thing we have in this life everything we owe to them. They ask so little, they've given so much, and I could never, never in my life be more proud, more proud than for you to let me be here and let me be your governor and let me honor these great people and help in this way right here. It's nothing. It's nothing for what they've given, but it's beautiful beyond belief. So God bless you. Thank you for being such an incredible community. And thank you, wonderful veterans and all those that have given so, so much. I'd say this last thing. You know, Post Perry, you know, who was my mom's brother, you know, and he used to teach told me not long ago that my granddad, we lived right over there. He would oftentimes walk around and he had a job in the mines and a big garden to tend to. And Pose would say, Granddad, how are you doing it? Three of his boys in the war at the same time. He said, Son, it's the only way I can stay alive. It's the only way I can stay alive. I had to stay every waking moment busy. And my dad, an Air Force captain, and from time to time, in their training, you know, some way, somehow, he'd get close to here and fly down this holler right here. Look, it's just, uh, it's really easy for me. It's easy for all of y'all. We love, we appreciate, and I thank you so much for letting me be here. God bless all of you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Johnny Smith. I'm a member of the support group here in Oceana and uh, one of those guys that made it possible along with many others. Thanks to Denny Lester. Um, like I said, I'm a lifelong resident of Wyoming County. I served in the 82nd Airborne Division, 811th Ordnance Army Reserve, and Company B, 2nd Battalion, 19th Special Forces Group. And before I introduce the next guest speaker, I would also like to draw attention to not only the sacrifice of all these heroes over here on the wall, but to recognize 
the sacrifice and heartache of the Gold Star family members, including myself. When you hear Taps play, it doesn't get any easier. I had a brother come back from Vietnam, closed casket. That's a long story in itself, but a lot of sacrifice. If there are any Gold Star members in this group today, would you please raise your hands? If there's any here today. I see a few members out here. Um, got some good news. It was in the Wyoming County report this morning. I'm a member of the committee uh, over in Pyville. Um, they are approved last week, county commission, to put a Gold Star family monument in the courthouse. So that's a good way down the road. Herschel Woody Williams, the Medal of Honor winner, he's helping with this program along with a few others in Pyville, Robbie Bailey and a few others. Um, now that that's said, it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce my former team leader and one of the best officers that I've had the pleasure to serve with in Company B, 2nd Battalion, 19th Special Forces Group, Major General James A. Hoyer, Adjutant General of West Virginia National Guard. Jim, if you would come up, please. I want to thank John for inviting me. You guys don't care. I'm part Italian. I got to move when I talk. So, uh, down, and uh, it's a privilege to be here with Governor Justice. Uh, we have the responsibility for 6,500 men and women in uniform in the West Virginia National Guard. It says a lot about our state because. Normally, a National Guard size of an organization is based on the size of its population in the state. And if you base the number we should have in West Virginia Guard based on the size of our state, we would have 3,200 in the Guard, but West Virginia has 6,500. That tells you a lot about who you are as a people. I just want to take a couple minutes and highlight a couple of things. The governor hit on a key word that we often forget throughout the year, but particularly on Veterans Day, as to why men and women do what they do in service of our nation. And the word he hit on was love. You join the military because you love your God, your country, your state, and your family. And you do those things out of love, out of love for all of those. Uh, I think it's important for us as West Virginia to remember, too, you know, Governor talks about we've got to understand that we're a pretty daggone important place. And I want to tell you a story about the history and how important we are to this nation. In 1735, the first settler to come across the mountain range, Morgan Morgan, established the first militia company in what was known as West Augusta, or the western portion of the Virginia colony. In 1755, that militia company fought with then Major George Washington in the French and Indian War and helped protect Braddock's flank as the British retreated from Fort Duquesne which is now Pittsburgh, in that war. So in 1775, when Washington was appointed the commander of the Continental Army, and this is not me telling a story, this comes from the United States Military History Center, Washington sent runners to the colonies and asked for the colonies to form their militia to help form the Continental Army. There were two additional runners sent out. One went to Winchester, and one went to Shepherdstown, now Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And the one unit from Shepherdstown, 98 militiamen led by Captain Hugh Stevenson, marched 600 miles in 24 days and entered Cambridge and was greeted by General Washington and became a part of the original formation of the Continental Army. So today in Fairmont, West Virginia, the 201st Field Artillery, the West Virginia National Guard, 
from a state that wasn't formed until 1863 has a battle streamer on its unit flag from 1775. That says who we are as the people of Appalachia and what we represent. It tells a story about us and the significant role we play in this nation. So today I want to thank our veterans, their families, and all of you all for being out here today. I want to pay particular tribute to Korean War and Vietnam veterans. We talk about World War II, the greatest generation. Our Korean and Vietnam veterans, in my opinion, are our most persistent generation. Because they came home, they weren't treated quite the way they should have been. But they never gave up on their country. And since September the 11th, 2001, Since the first National Guard units mobilized after September the 11th, 2001 to today, there has never been a send-off or a return of a West Virginia National Guard unit that didn't have Korean War and Vietnam veterans there to take care of those who are serving today. And they will tell you it's because they don't want the next generation to be treated the way they were. So God bless our Vietnam and Korean War veterans for your service. The last thing I want to tell you and leave you with is I thought being in this uniform was, was hard. But I will tell you that being the parent, my wife and I are parents of two in uniform. Being a military family member is the hardest thing. And being a Gold Star family member is something that most of us can't fathom. So to all of our families and our Gold Star families, God bless you all and thank you for your service and God bless Wyoming County.